Hi, welcome to another episode. Today we're going to discuss how to attach your reel line directly onto your mono shooting line. I'll show you how to tie this knot, uh, a slip knot, which is very effective, very useful for using a reel on mono shooting line. This is how you tie them. There, there are two versions, you'll see those now. Okay, so how are we going to demonstrate how to connect the reel line to the spear shooting line? Generally, you guys use mono that's crimped. Size of the loop up to you. Push the dynema through the loop, then wrap it twice around the main line. The tag end, fold it in half, push it through the loop, pull that tight. That's all it is. Very simple. In the water to disconnect that, you tug on the tag end. If your hands are busy, you can use your teeth, pull on it, comes apart very easy and very easy to tie. This single line around the loop, Dyneema being much higher abrasive resistance, can cut the mono. So for those who want to really make it stronger, the second option is to wrap the reel line twice through the loop. To do that, we go through the mono loop twice. So now you've got twice the strands holding on the mono. And then you do exactly the same knot. Twice around the main line, fold the tag end in half, push it through, pull it up tight. That will be a stronger grip, but the single one is just as adequate for your average diving. But if you want to shoot really big fish, this is the one that you can use. If this loop is large, it is prone to hooking on something. All that will do is pull the tag end out, but it still stays connected. It may jam up too tight for you to undo, then you just cut it. So how we've set it up here, the Dyneema on the one side with our slip knot, one wrap around the mono. The mono we've wrapped it multiple times around the jig, as well as the Dyneema. The reason for this is a knot is a weak point. We're trying to keep these end pieces stronger than the middle piece where the knot is. So hopefully, if all goes well, this is where it'll break. At least see how strong that is. Lines are still tensioning. Normally get around 70. Everything's still tensioning up on the jig. have a crimp slipping. There we go. That went to about 90. In this case, the failure wasn't on the knot, it was on the crimp. As you can see, it stressed the mono, which sheared out of the crimp at around 90 odd kilos, which is pretty good. But the knot itself, although it slipped up tight, it didn't pull free. Pretty pointless doing a double wrap, but I will do the double wrap through the loop and let's see how that one does. Okay, so here we set up again. Same setup, everything's wrapped on the ends. Dyneema knot, double wrap this time around the main mono loop and double around its main line as well. Let's see how good that one goes. Had to stop there for a moment. It was actually unraveling off the shackle. Tied or not, let's see if that stops. There we go.
That's reached maximum. I'm gonna pull it up, wrap it some more, and do it again. We got to 80 something there without a breakage. Okay, we got to over 80 there without any breakage. There was a lot of slippage on the ends. The knot itself has actually maintained very well. You can see it's had a massive load at 80 already, which is way more than you're ever gonna be able to pull on it. But let's break it. Nothing slipping there. Yeah, the knot actually came undone. Previous tests showed this to be the stronger option with a double wrap, but yeah, there was clearly a slip. The possibility is the newer braid we're using has a higher wax content. So anything 90, around 90 is plenty good enough. I would just stick with the single wrap. Well, there you have it. Now you know how to tie your Dyneema onto your mono. What we're gonna experiment now with the third option is instead of wrapping twice around the mono, as you saw in the previous, we're gonna wrap around, go all the way around and come back out. That'll create a figure of eight. Let me get it into position. So imagine that as a figure of eight. I think this will hold a lot better. Let's try the same knot and see if we get any slippage on that. So here now we have the third possible option, figure of eight back weave through the loop. This mono has been fairly well stressed already and uh, we've tied the same loop on the other side. Let's see how this one goes. Locking up quite well. And already a bit stronger. Over 100 is more than adequate. Well, nearly 110. So that loop back on itself so that the two loops interlock with each other difficult to explain after that break we investigated the whole setup and you can see how well that's not pulled up tight the break wasn't at the knot or the crimp this time it was where it was wrapped around the jig you can see how this is all frayed here um, that's very impressive i think this prevents the loop from slipping in the crimp and this makes this zone actually way stronger than the straight mono this mono is about 140 kgs direct pull but we got 110 odd which is exceptionally good that's very impressive i'm going to continue using this knot but with this new extra twist basically the figure of eight so the two loops interlock with each other seems to be the best option you saw that over 100 kilos so watch this space for more of these <laughs>